pretty much this is the shop. You know what I'm saying? That we pretty much, you know, this is where we had all day getting our haircuts. So this is my partner right here. Look, eight dollars, green dollar. This is this is this is dollars. This is green. This is dollars. So that makes up the green dollar family. So you got to make every day money. You know what I'm saying? You got to make every every day money, every week money, every month money equals up to every year money. And that's how when you see Jay and Fifty and all them guys on Forbes, you understand that they're making money every day. So we had to invest our money into good investments and stuff that we can make money every day. The things I'm doing is a lot of speculation that I'm hiding, that I'm in witness protection, that I'm here and I'm there. But <laughs> the funniest part, the funny thing about it is, in my line I say, everybody looking for me, but I'm right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I mean, basically, the 34th floor was a level of life that I had to go to. Because if I would have stayed on that same level, I would have been murked. A nigga will murk me because they're gonna try to murk me out of, um, you know, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna prove a point. This nigga's a rat. He can't be running around. We don't like rats. Fill it up is a dangerous town. So a nigga would try to slump me for GP. So and I can't shoot at a, at a target that I can't see, but they can shoot at me because I'm the target. So I had to go up to the 34th floor, 34th floor, the mental level. So now I'm like this, I'm on the 34th floor, and, and, and it's an elevator, and it takes an elevator key, a code to get up here. You niggas don't have it. So the only niggas that was able to fuck with me was the niggas I really fucked with. So what made you come up with that? I had no other choice. What else I'm gonna do? Mm -hmm. Am I gonna go, am I gonna, every time somebody say Tommy is this, I'm gonna shoot at her? Mm -hmm. Every time somebody cuss out one of my cousins or my baby mom, what I'm gonna do? So I had to let my family know we're not on that level with them. They, 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 we can't, and then it's, it, it's crazy because it's so easy to get one of these dudes clinked up. You only take a couple bucks. And ain't like it used to be 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand, a stack of 1,500 to 2,000 to get somebody a month. So I had to take my mental level up to another, another uh, playing field because of the, of the white people and the business people I deal with. They was, you know how shocked these people was when they seen me on the paper for being a drug dealer? It was shocking. Like I hang with Kurt Beck and, and Stuart Chalfin and, and um, Fleetway and, and you know, and, and, and Epi and, and Stephen Epstein and Linda Creek. I hang with some serious rich people. I'm at their dinner tables. I'm in their condos, I'm talking about real condos, not this little bullshit, you get a little condo and you pay 1300 I'm talking about a condo that costs $2 million. Mm -hmm. So when they see me on the news for getting busted for drugs, it was the most humiliating thing for me and them. Mm -hmm. Because here's this kid that brings me around his family. He's a Jewish guy, he's 50, 60 years old. His wife looks at me, hey Tommy, what's going on? She's feeding me. I'm in a house with their kids. I perform, I, I perform that my, my, my bank, my accountant's um, um, daughter's wedding. Well, all white people, I'm the only black guy in there. They, they thinking I'm an R&B singer because the way I'm dressed. <laughs> right? But I'm actually a, a rapper. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be gentle with the crowd because it's like I really can't curse. But they wanted me to perform ballers. I see nothing but gangsters up there. So, that's 200 people that's like, oh, who, who's this guy? You know, then I introduced my accountant. I had him dress up. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I brought a special guest here. His name is Stu Doggy Dog. Mm -hmm. You know, because white people love Snoop Doggy Dog. So I bring this guy out. It was the most fun thing that, that, that their family has ever seen. They never seen their father. Mm -hmm. This guy's worth $60 million, you know, on stage with me. So for me to get busted like that, and then it was embarrassing for a lot of people. It was embarrassing for my family. It was embarrassing for my Aunt Judy, um, my cousin Dawn. It was very embarrassing, man. Like, people don't know what I went through, baby. I was suicidal. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I was, I, I was like, no, I'm not living like this. Then they put me inside a cell. Baby, I live in a crib. My crib is big as shit, like, what, uh, 10,000 square feet? I got two feet and 10 feet in my backyard. I got every car out there that you want to drop. It's cool. I mean, it's like this, we don't even take keys out the car. The car keys just stay in and we just jump in the car. In the morning time, so imagine, imagine living like that. I'm fucking E, I'm fucking Charlie Baltimore, I'm fucking all the bad bitches, Foxy, but everybody, I'm fucking all these girls. Mm -hmm. And imagine that to one day it's all gone. It's just all gone, my life is down over. So now I'm in a box of self. Now the media is, I'm already, a, a, a local celebrity here, so I really can't really be in population really, really. But I'm taking it, I'm taking out, yeah, I want to be in population. I'm a real nigga. 
But then the, the shit going so crazy on my name, they got to put me in like a cell by myself because they thinking somebody's going to hurt me. And I'm thinking, fuck it, let them hurt me because at least I'll go out like a man. But they saying, no, we want to put you in witness protection. And I'm like, nigga, I'll die on the streets while I live like that. But it's always an option because I'm a businessman. Like me coming out of Philly, me coming from out of Philly, I didn't know how motherfuckers was going to respond. I worked so hard to be Tommy Hill. You know how hard I worked for that name since I was 13, 14 years old. So to now for that name to be, oh, he's a rat, he's a snitch. I'm thinking I'm going to walk down the street and nigga, I'm like, you fucking It was like, it was like, it was like, And have you gotten that? No, I didn't get that, but I was expecting that. And then, and then to be honest with you, the people who hurt me the most was Richard Allen. Richard Allen, my own people. Because they know the deal. Nobody has gotten locked up in Richard Allen if they had big I give them a $100,000 reward. If anybody see this girl on the street and they're from Richard Allen Project and they say I told on them, please have her contact you, I'll buy your fucking car. And that's my word, you put this everywhere. And if I become a liar, I'm a liar, okay? But that's not me. So, so to lose that stuff, to have all that stuff and then be in the cell, baby, I'm thinking about, yo, this is over. You know how I got, they had me in Ferris and locked in a cell. Beanie Seagulls there, Brandon there, Sputz there. I want to go out on the campaign, on the compound with these niggas, because if I got to fight Beanie Seagull or fight this guy, fight this, let's do it. But they got me locked in a cell. Not that I have beef with Beanie, I'm just saying, just. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but they got me locked in a cell like, I can't come out. So niggas just thinking I'm scared. Hey, nigga, I'm good with these. And then we in the federal system, ain't like y'all niggas really gonna do nothing because y'all know y'all gonna get more time. So it was all a weird situation, baby. Then you got niggas talking shit to me who wouldn't even look at me. Nigga, you wouldn't even look at me. Nigga, you, nigga, when you see me, nigga, you bow down to me. Nigga, now you talking shit out your mouth. Nigga, you crazy. It was just a humiliating feeling to have a guy like Petey Crack. My guy. My guy who I took care of. Who took care of me too. Who, who, who I grew up with, we, we sleep in the same house, we taking care, you know, he wearing my jewelry, I never wore his jewelry because he didn't have jewelry, you know what I'm saying, he's wearing Beanie Siegel jewelry, and Beanie Siegel gave him that jewelry because he's wearing my jewelry, and, 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 I'm, I'm, and Beanie had to step his name up and give his artist something because he knew, so for him to get on the radio and say, yo, Tommy's a rat, he's a snake, I'm like, wow, wow, you got balls, like you guys got, you know, that's why I congratulate them dudes, I'm like, y'all niggas grew up, huh? All right, now cross that line again. And when I make one of you niggas an example, everybody's gonna be mad at me like, damn, why did he do that? Mm -hmm. For instance, and I'm gonna go off the record, I don't give a fuck. I'm in Atlanta. I get a call from a girl from Philly. She was like, yo, come to the party. All the Philly guys are here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool, no problem. Let me rewind. That day, my man from Chicago got robbed for 650,000. He's a major dude. He's a, and when he told me the numbers were 650,000, I didn't blink, because he's a real nigga. He tells me he got robbed for 650,000. He called me, he said, dog, I need help, baby. I said, I'm on my way. Nigga, I'm on my way. He's not my brother. He's, he's just a guy I see out, we drink. We spend 10 grand at the bar. Oh, he do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He calls me, I go to his crib, I give him 10 sacks. The nigga kiss me on my forehead, like, yo, dog. I fucking love you. I will murder somebody for you. I'm like, no, dog. This is his girlfriend. I'm saying her girl is his girlfriend is standing in the corner to her, with her face to the wall. He told that bitch, don't even move, bitch. I, he got all her phones lined up. He's serious. That night, a girl from Philly tells me to come to a party. I go to a party, freeway, Beanie Seagull, all of them in there. I really don't fuck with. I really don't know Beanie Seagull, to be honest. But I know freeway. I was a part of Freeway, put Freeway in the studio first with Dao from Seven from the Government. So I'm talking to my guys. Now my guys up from Chicago are in there looking for any nigga who acting like he's spending extra money. Who act like he balling because they ready to work something. So I, I don't want to be here long because I really don't fuck with these niggas and blah, blah, blah. So I leave to go pick up my bitch. So when I leave, I shake my man hand and tell him I'm leaving. When I left, Beanie Siegel goes to him and say, yo, don't fuck with that nigga, he's a rat, right? So my man says to Beanie, how come every time when y'all see him, y'all don't say it to him, but y'all say he's a rat? Now here's the moral of the story. He calls me and says, give me the word. I will mope this nigga 
right here. I will rob these niggas. I will do everything to these niggas. And I'm not saying Beanie and them wasn't strapped. I'm not saying that they suckers. I'm just saying that it would have been from the blind side. He says, give me the word. I say, nah, cuz that's Beanie fucking Siegel, man. That's my guy. I don't give a fuck what he said about me. He's my guy. All them niggas. I, I wouldn't dare have none of my people get hurt out of town on strip for me. Now dig this, what Beanie didn't know was Beanie just did a video with R. Kelly. R. Kelly is a rat in Chicago and a child pornography rapist. So he had a video with the guy that they hate in Chicago, but he's talking about I'm a rat. The guy looking at him like, nigga, do you, you just did a video with the nigga in Chicago that we hate. And you talking about this guy who just gave me 10 grand. I don't know Beanie Siegel. I said, no, you won't. Beanie's my guy. Even and I don't know him. I, I listen to his music, nigga. Um, filling in the air, nigga. He wrote that about me. You feel me? I feel. I mean, I'm not saying he did, but that's how I feel. So I'm not a grimy guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you how grimy shit could get when you playing with the wrong niggas in certain situations. And if I was a grimy guy, I would have said, "Go ahead, man, moke that nigga." I don't give a fuck about him. Now, on the, on the, on the flip side, he probably would have moked me. But I'm not a grimy guy. But I'm just telling you how real shit gets. People talk, talk, they talk. And it's like, yo, dude, relax, man. I gave out refrigerators, man. You know what I'm saying? I gave out washing dryers, man. I gave out cars, man. You know what I'm giving out next? College tuition. You know what my, you know what my, you know what my dream is? This is my dream. I want to pull five tractor trailers up to Richard Allen Projects with all brand new cars. And I want to fucking park the cars out there and have my neighborhood pick their cars. Everybody run with the keys ahead. And I'm going to do that shit in the next two years. I promise you. That's what I want to do. Because that, that project raised me, but they turned their back on me that fast. That fast. You know, it wasn't one person in that project that stood up and said, Nah, yo. Y'all got this kid all wrong. This kid gives out turkeys. I, you fuck feeding drugs. I literally feed you. I put food in your refrigerator. My girlfriend, I lost my baby mom, the one I love because I love my niggas more than her. And she telling me, them niggas ain't no good for me. And I'm like, bitch, fuck out of here. What you want to fuck him? You know how we as guys, we snap. Mm -hmm. All the time, she's seen the demon in back's eyes. She's seen the demon in my homie eyes. Girls got that sense. Mm -hmm. She's seen it. But I didn't believe it. I lost the girl I love due to me loving my niggas more. That's why when I get a girl now, I become friends with them, I talk with them, I learn more about them, I'm more like into them, and I go hard. And some girls say I move too fast because I know what I want. Like I'm not looking for no long, I'm not looking for no bullshit. I'm looking for Mama Michelle, Mama Michelle Obama. And if Barack Obama can yeah, have his, why can't I? I'm, I'm a live nigga too. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like being real with you, baby. To have that shit on your name is suicidal, baby. What shit, your name is? Okay, imagine you can't be her no more. Imagine you gotta be punkin'. Imagine you can't get in front of a camera no more because everybody gonna say, that bitch is this. Where you gonna make money from, sweetie? Imagine your family don't even fuck with you no more. Imagine your baby moms turned against you because they're your baby fathers because they think you put their lives in danger. Imagine everybody just believing you're a creep. And I love people, I'm a cancer. So imagine everybody around me is just saying like, he's not cool. Mm -hmm. Imagine when a, when a record company hears about, okay, um, let me call Philly. And they say, oh no, I got book deals on the table. Me, Terry Woods, I remember Terry Woods, my girl. I love Terry Woods. Terry Woods came to my house, my mansion, let sat on the floor, rolled her fucking uh, her weed up in uh, easy water paper and was asking me, how do you feel about true to the game? I'm like, Terry, I don't give a fuck about no book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a street nigga. This was when the book was just paper. I'm out of a deal. I'm about to get 650000 from Simon and, Simon and Schwarzkopf or some shit from a book deal, right? They get on the phone and they call all the bookstores down here. And say, yo, with this Tommy Hill story sell, you know what the black people from this city told him? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. He told them major people, if you put a book out on him, them people might come to New York and blow your building up. They took money out of my children's mind. Cosmic Cat, the biggest 